joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, the sun above. Let the clouds of sin and sadness drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird on flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's the seventh Sunday of the Easter season. I hope you have your coffee. I already had my coffee, so I'm on the lemonade. So, coffee and prayer. Let's open our worship this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I heard you say amen. If you have the order of worship written out in front of you from the website, good. If you don't, just put on those listening ears. The opening collect prayer. Let us pray. God, who raised Jesus from the dead on the first Easter, you forgive sins and redeem the world. Forgive us our sins and redeem our most beautiful world from threats of disease, disaster, and death. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Psalm 68. Let God rise up. Let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exalted before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. God leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked. The heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. That ends the psalm. 
We're now going to turn to the epistle reading. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Our epistle is taken from 1 Peter, selections from chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist the devil. Stay steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have, to, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the epistle for today. Our gospel for today is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine 
are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This ends the gospel for this morning. When we think about the sufferings of Jesus, we frequently think about his suffering from sin, from human negligence and arrogance, pride, and most dastardly human cruelty. But what about suffering from causes other than sin? What about suffering from causes such as disease? We still suffer. Nobody is guilty. But we still suffer. It just seems to be the human lot in life that we are subject to natural forces for which suffering is the product. If you were to take a look at ancient Buddhism, it has four noble truths. And you know what the first one is? All of life is suffering. Suffering isn't just incidental if you're a Buddhist. It is ubiquitous. It is definitive. We Christians are just happy and we rejoice at those moments in which we're not suffering. You are now looking at the Eisenheim altar piece that appeared in the monastery of St. Anthony, painted by Niklaus of Haugenau and Matthias Grundwald a few years before Martin Luther posted the 95 Theses in 1517. You see Jesus Christ hung on the cross in the middle, and to your and my right and to his left is John the Baptist holding scripture and pointing to Christ. He's interpreting the great prophets of Israel coming to fulfillment. Down by John's foot, you'll see the prancing lamb with the cross. That is the lamb who is triumphant in the resurrection. And to the left, of course, we see Jesus' mother Mary in the arms of John the disciple and Mary Magdalene. Why are we looking at this particular painting? I want you to give special attention to the body of Jesus on the cross. He is riddled with sores. These are the very sores that victims of the plague were suffering during this period of time. God suffers with us. On the back of the altar, we'll find the resurrection. On the one hand, God suffers death with us. God does not explain suffering. Rather, God answers suffering with resurrection. Job asked God again and again, please explain my suffering and all he got was a tornado. God does not explain suffering. God responds to suffering with healing and the promise of resurrection to everlasting life. Let's turn now to our prayers of intercession. And when you hear me say, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. Want to practice? In your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> okay. Let's pray. We come to you, O God of resurrection, with feet stuck in the world of the cross. Around us and among us, people are dying by the tens of thousands, victims of the rampant COVID-19 disease. Like a horse from the apocalypse, the plague marches through our community without regard to whom it brings grief. As you brought refuge and strength through the psalmist, 
bring us a portion of that strength here and now. O oh God, you are our sword and shield in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Well, I think I can hear you. God needs to hear you, but I can hear you too. We pray, O oh God, for the well-being of creation, for the health of seas and rivers and lakes, and for the will to care for your earth. O oh God, you are our rainbow of promise in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for peace and justice in the world, for an end to war and international turmoil, for concord in our troubled society, for the heads of state, legislators, and local civic leaders that they enact wise procedures to deal with the coronavirus. O oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. We pray for physicians and nurses and home health aides, medical researchers in the World Health Organization. Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. O oh God, you provide our everlasting home. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all in need, for those suffering in the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, for those who are sick and those awaiting death, and for those in the cross and crown family whom we name now, Carol B., Suzanne, Sue, John, Richard, Stephen, Carrie, Stephen, Estella, Ditka, Lori, Roxy, Emery, Lynn C's family, Abigail, Linda, Jake, and Charlie. We'll go on to those that have long-term healing concerns. Joanne and Carol, Chris, Chris, Roger, Sawyer, Ed, Barbara, Gabe, Wayne, Mark, Alice, Don, Bill, and Kendra. And for those who are homebound involuntarily, even though many of us are homebound voluntarily, Robert and Warna, Dick and Dorothy, Ruth, Pastor Leon, Beverly, and Jenny. Oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life, where sorrows will be no more. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Make that a loud amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Say it out loud. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Next Sunday, Pentecost. So when you tune in to worship, wear something red. Red is the Holy Spirit's color, the spirit of fire. I hope you're all on fire come next Sunday morning. Bye for now.